So um, I'm co-founder of a little startup here in Seattle called Pop-Ins. Um, so the first question is, what is a Pop-Ins? Um, and uh, basically we are are in augmented reality, so not a surprise. I took uh, my friend Alec here down to the market uh, earlier this week and just filmed a second of him. That backdrop. Alec was a contestant on American Idol last season. He's a emerging artist here in Seattle. Great to work with. So, um, Augmented reality is not that complicated. Our core focus is volumetric video. So we create these assets and then you place them into a real world environment and voila, augmented reality. But one of the things we're trying to do different, and this is what led us into the world of NFTs, is um, overlay data onto the experience. Um, Unlike most people who are in the AR space um, where the, the supplemental content is downloaded to a device, we actually stream it. This has a lot of technical advantages in terms of duration of the experience. But one of the key things it does is it allows us to overlay data and it's data that we can manage. So in the um, pop-in we saw a few minutes ago, we had the artist's name, Alec, uh, the name of his song, Nobody But You. And we earlier this year um, sold these as NFTs. So um, this is uh, 8 of 11, and it's owned by someone you might recognize, Alex from Rarible. Um, but if Alex sells it, we can update the data, which we think is pretty interesting. Um, owner attribution is what really led us into the belief that there's something here for us. So again, the three layers that give us the ability to take our um, volumetric video, allow consumers to take it out to their worlds, and then um, overlay that with any kind of data we might choose. In case you want, I'll just pause on this slide. Feel free. This is a QR code which will launch the experience that I just did. Um, in our model, anyone can consume the data. They are the experience they are. We're not trying to put any kind of DRM around that. We actually want everyone to do it because we believe that that will make the owner attribution that much more valuable. Um, so just to kind of see, it's, it's cool to have a singer and, you know, what's it mean to have um, your, your Twitter uh, photo and handle on that? That's kind of cool. It's a start, but is it really that valuable? I mean, the truth is we obviously don't know. Um, we're just entering the market and this is our approach, but everyone's got a, a Mona Lisa analogy when it comes to NFTs. So not to be outdone, we wanted to have one. So imagine that uh, the Mona Lisa has turned into an NFT and that every time a photo is taken of it, um, this overlay data pops up. So the name of the artist, the work, again, what edition it is and the owner, in this case, how valuable is this picture to Alex, our owner? If that picture goes viral, um, a video goes viral, the owner is pinned to it uh, in perpetuity. That's a pretty interesting thing. And again, for resale value, someone else sees this, sees the ownership as a pretty interesting thing and wants to bid and um, buy it. So that's kind of a... Again, the NFT space, we were primarily an AR company focused on volumetric video, stumbled across the NFT space and started thinking about what we could do to monetize it. We started our company just uh, this past year, dropped our first, we're still in beta, we dropped our first uh, NFT in June. Our technology partner is a company here in Seattle by the name of Omnivore, which is the world leader in compression for volumetric video. And that's what's allowing us to do this streaming. And myself and my partner, Christina Callio, um, have a long history of at the intersection of media and new technology and are extremely excited about this. Say thank you again for letting me talk.